I just thought I'd go through the whole bag, show you how I go out into the field, some of the clothes I take, some of the rain protection I take, and what is needed to get a really decent day's worth of shooting. I'm gonna start with the external stuff. This isn't necessarily in my camera bag, but it goes with me every time. I have a binoculars harness. When you're doing wildlife, you just kind of need to know what's going on. So binoculars come in really handy. So I never go out in the field without my binoculars. And I'm just using a pair of uh, Swarovski. Uh, these are just eight by thirties. And I chose them because they're small. I mean, I'm carrying a lot of weight already. So having a smaller footprint and a smaller set of binoculars, they're really good quality glass. I'm not trying to see detail. I'm just trying to see what's out there. So I use those. When I'm in Alaska, I always have my bear spray and that just is on, on my uh, binoculars harness. And then the last thing I have is a little pouch. And what I do with this is I'll put my phone in this and it um, works really well just to have it on your side. You know, we're all doing social media. We're all doing little quick posts and I'm always using my phone for that. So the phone goes in here. So that's a pretty decent little setup. Now for the big bag, Let's just dig into this pocket. What I use this pocket for is all my extra clothes. Weather can change all the time, as you all know. Unless you're shooting in the summer and you know it's going to be fairly warm, you always need to carry the extra layers. And I tend to go overboard, but I'd rather have too much than not enough. So I start out with, this is my just my rain jacket. It's very thin, very lightweight. Just one layer, but it keeps the rain off and it works really well. And I always try to choose a color that's not obtrusive out there in the wilderness or out in nature. So it just kind of blends in. So I'm not sticking out like a sore thumb. I keep another layer of, of warmth. And I really love this jacket because as you can hear, if you have another puffy jacket, let's say you have a Patagonia puffy jacket or a North Face or whatever, they're made out of that nylon and they're very loud. This jacket is some other sort of material and it's a lot lighter weight and it also is very quiet. So I kind of like that just because you can see, you hear this and you hear that. So it's, it makes a difference. Not super critical, but something to pay attention to. I have another rain jacket in here. And what I use this for is most of the time, if I'm really quickly needing to cover up the camera for rain, I'll just grab this out of the bag and just throw this over the camera. And I can still operate the camera. I just put it so that the hood's over the monitor and then I just have the, the jacket out and it works really well for rain protection. And if it's super rainy, I can wear it myself too and just have a couple of, of layers. Or if somebody forgot their jacket, I always have a second one. I have my rain pants. That is another thing you always have to have out there in the, in the wilds. You just never know. And the more comfortable you are, the more productive you're going to be. So carrying it is well worth it. And I have a lot of weight built up with just these clothes. I mean, I bet it's four or five pounds of just clothes that I have in here. But like I say, it's, it's something that you need. And lastly, right now we're in winter. So I always carry a pair of puffy pants. Let's continue doing the external pockets. Rain is a big deal. As you can see, I've got all these jackets. I got the outside rain cover. I also bring an umbrella. If you're in a steady downpour and it's just a consistent rain for three or four or five hours, the umbrella comes in really handy. So I always have an umbrella with me and it's nothing fancy. It's just a little Amazon thing. I bet it was not even 20 bucks. Got it camouflaged and that just is an, an added benefit for being out in the woods. I carry a couple extra cables. I got headphones in here and then I've got a, a charging cable for my phone because a lot of the batteries I have have a USB port on it so I can charge up my phone if I need to in the field so I always carry that that's it for that side but this side is where I carry my water so I don't have water in here today but this is where I'll put my water bottle and uh, you at least need to have a liter of water with you when you're out so for the top pocket let's return to the rain theme this is so overkill, but it rains so much that it's just nice to have. And you always know you're kind of protected. I just have a great big trash bag. A, I don't even know, some sort of glad trash bag. And this is coming in handy if you need to sit down in some really wet stuff, or you need to cover a pack, or you want to set some gear down. A lot of times I'll pull this out and set it down if it's really wet out. So that comes in pretty dang handy. I have a little pair of gloves in here. If you watch some of our videos when we were doing moose earlier, it was so cold. It was fall, but in Alaska, it got so cold. And in the mornings, 
This is a must to have your gloves out or with you. I've got a little microfiber cloth, just an extra in here, just in case I need to clean some stuff off. <laughs> More paracord. Man, I tell you what, this stuff comes in handy. I carry probably way too much, but it's lightweight and you might as well have it. I've got a little tool. You'll see when we pull the camera out, there's a lot of little things that can come loose or need adjusting. So a lot of times I'll carry just a little red tool and it's made specifically for photo stuff. It's not specific to red if you're using a Sony or a Canon or any of these uh, Arca Swiss plates or anything on your tripod, this thing just comes in handy if you need to tighten something up. And I have a headlamp in here. More times than not, you're staying till the last light, right? Because it's beautiful shooting conditions but then you have to walk out in the dark. So I always have a headlamp with me just so that you can get out and, be, and do it safely wherever you're at. So that's kind of it for this top pocket, I think. Oh, toilet paper. You always need to have your, your toilet paper in just in case, right? So this pack, which I didn't mention, this is the F-Stop Shin. It's the biggest pack they make. I don't know how, many, how big it actually is, but if you just look up the F-Stop Shin, you can figure out how big it is. It's probably overkill for most people, but for what I'm carrying in here, it's the bag that I need because it'll accommodate the, the camera body and the lens. It's kind of cool because it comes with this unit called an ICU. An ICU is a pocket or it's a pouch that fits down in the bag. So if I'm gonna fly with this bag, I can pull the pouch out and it'll fit an overhead compartment and then I can check the bag if I need to. This bag is a little too big. I could see a flight attendant saying, you know what? That's just a little too much to put in the overhead. So if that's the case, I'm all good. I'll just pull out this ICU and then put the bag in, check on or whatever I need to do and it works out great. Here's another rain cover. This one is specifically made to cover up a DSLR with a long lens. I've been able to make this work with the red too. It's a little harder because you got that big monitor. But this is something I just found on Amazon and I really like it. It works really well. So I just have many options because anytime you're out there, depending on the conditions, you just want to have a bunch of uh, ways to protect your gear. Um, I always carry some zip ties. So if you see in here, we got a couple of zip ties. Who knows if I want to zip tie on one of my ring covers or I want to zip tie something to my tripod. I've actually zip tied my umbrella to my tripod because if you're trying to run a video camera and hold an umbrella, it's kind of difficult. Oh, and this is my little air tag. So I have an air tag in every bag. It's great, of course, if it gets stolen, but it's also great if you're like, where did I leave that bag? Where is it at right now? And this will give me some sort of insight as to where it might be. So that's the top pouch. If it's winter like it is right now, I always carry a little bit heavier glove. So I'll take the littler gloves, put them inside the big gloves, and you got layers to try to keep you a little bit warmer. On the top portion of this ICU, this internal compartment unit or whatever the ICU stands for, this is where I'll put all my food. So bars, nuts, M&Ms, whatever I'm taking for the day, sandwich, goes in here and then I have a little bit of extra room for a few more things which got another pair of gloves in here you'll see that I carry way too much but I'm always prepared for the worst you just never know what it's going to be like oh here's a protein bar I don't have too much of it in here but if I'm going out for all day I'll make sure I got five or six of these bars I've got some sunflower seeds some pistachios some high energy sort of thing that keeps you going throughout the day and a sandwich if uh if the day uh, calls for it. I also carry a little hand warmers. I don't really like to use these. I have an electric hand warmer, but these come in handy if your electric hand warmer dies or if someone is just super cold, these are great to have. And then lastly, in this little pouch, this is where I carry all my cards. With the red, I'm just shooting on two terabyte CF Express B cards. So I have two that are proprietary for red, but then I have a couple others that I use on my Canon cameras. And these will actually work in the red. Okay, that's it on top. Now let's get into the good stuff because this is probably what you all are here to watch. Inside the bag, it's really 
not that much stuff. It's just bulky stuff. That's why you have to have this great big bag. Let's start with everything but the camera. I always carry four batteries. I've got a couple of 98s and a couple of 150s. And this will get me, these will do about an hour and a half and these will do about an hour. So I'm not shooting all day because you're traveling, you're hiking, you're doing that sort of thing. But if you have a really good day, it's pretty easy to go through four hours worth of battery. So I just make sure I got about four hours worth of battery. So I got four of those. I always carry my little cheater glasses because these come in handy when you can't see the screen very good. And most of the stuff on the screen, I don't need to use these for filming because I use a lot of peaking so I can dial that in without glasses. If you guys have watched some of our videos, you'll see that I'll mount a GoPro to the rails of my camera. And that way I can shoot me shooting whatever I'm shooting. And that's just more for YouTube content. And I'll use this arm to do it. So I can put this arm, clamp it right to the, the rails on the camera, put the GoPro out and point it right back at me and just hit record. And then I'm hands free about, and I can shoot whatever I'm shooting, whether it's a moose or a bear or whatever. And it's just kind of handy to, to make all that work. It's a little heavy, but it makes for great content. The monitor for red, is awesome. The downside is it's a wind sail and it can make your camera do a lot of shaking if it's really windy, but the best shooting days aren't really windy days anyways. It's intended to go on its own little mount on this camera that I use, but I've modified the whole thing so I have my own mount put onto this, which goes onto a rail system on the camera itself. I can take it out in different parts and I can put it away in different parts and it just packs better into the pack. I've got a microfiber cloth. You always got to have one of these. They're great for just keeping stuff clean and keeping smudges off of the screen. As far as accessories, this is the last accessory I have. I'm using Canon lenses with a Raptor red camera and the mount on that is an RF mount. So if I'm using an EF mount Canon lens, I have to use an adapter that goes from RF to EF. The cool thing about that is Canon made a mount that you can put a neutral density filter into, or you can use clear or neutral density, a variable neutral density from Canon. So that's what I carry here. So if I'm on a bright sunny day, then I'm going to pull out my filter that is the variable neutral density, and that is what's going to go in in place of the clear. The cool thing about shooting in Alaska most of the time is it stays pretty cloudy and you don't have to use this a lot. I'd prefer not to use this if I don't have to, but Sometimes you do, and I always have it, just because then I don't have to run a matte box or put filters in on the backside or on the front of the lens. Okay, lastly, what's in here is the camera. Red V-Raptor S35 with the Sigma 60-600 to and a rail system. This camera has proved to be pretty bomber for wildlife. You know, when I'm out there shooting for the BBC, I'm using, most of the time they'll send a... 50 to 1,000, a Canon lens, but those things are $80,000 and I can't afford that. So this is the next best thing. It's the next closest lens that you can get to 50 to 1,000. A 60 to 600 is pretty, pretty good. And then if I'm shooting everything at 8K, which is what this camera does natively, if I really want to cheat, I could punch into 6K or 4K and then get extra range out of this lens so i'll do that occasionally depending on what i'm shooting the cool thing about this camera is it will do 8k 120. there is no rhyme or reason to building a wildlife camera with rails and all the accessories that you need and what this does is it's protecting this mounting point right here so between the camera and the lens this is the weakest part of the whole system if i'm walking around with the camera mounted on the tripod and i happen to fall and if i didn't have this all unified setup this is your breaking point this is what's going to break if you're not careful but by having the rail system it keeps it all nice and tight and then this is where that ef that i just talked about ef to rf adapter is right here so i can pull filters in and out and i can go from neutral density to clear and it's super convenient and it makes for a really nice little compact setup and that's about it that's what we've got in the camera bag if you all have any questions, hit me up in the comments. I will answer anything and I'll give you all kinds of suggestions on what I've tried. Like I said, there's no rhyme or reason to the perfect setup. I can give you some suggestions and you can find a million different ways to build that camera.